In this section, we're going to be looking at the normal distribution and its applications. You'll definitely want to have a set of normal tables in your calculator ready to work some of these problems. In the section before, we worked with the standard normal distribution, and we learned how to use our normal tables and use our calculators. So with the standard normal distribution, I always use my random variable with z, and z would be distributed normal 0, 1. Whoops, normal 0, 1. So when I say normal 0, 1, really what we're talking about there is a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So again, 0 is my mean, 1 is my standard deviation. Well, this is going to change in this section. In this section, I could have any normal random variable with any mean and any standard deviation. And so what we have to do here in order to use our normal tables is we have to standardize the score. Now your calculator doesn't require that you standardize the score. The tables, the normal tables on the sheet of paper require that you standardize the score. It's good to know how to standardize the score either way uh, because being able to standardize is going to become very, very important when we get into our next section. So our rules to standardize. We actually looked at this in the last unit when we were looking at measures of spread or variability. The way we standardize is we take our x value, subtract the mean, and divide by sigma. So z, what happens is our standard normal random variable. So I take my value of x that I'm looking at on, on the graph, and I'll show you what this looks like in a second. I subtract the mean, and then I divide the whole numerator by the standard deviation. Now what this does is this gives me the number of standard deviations the value of x is above or below the mean. And the mean, of course, is that value of mu. This will be important to know for a quiz is what z actually means. So once I standardize that, then I can use the standard normal tables that we have. And then again, when we talk about our calculators, I just have to put in the value for mu and sigma, and it kind of standardizes it for us in the background. So I think the easiest way to go is to go ahead and look at quite a few examples. So for this first example, let's go ahead and look at a graph that depicts the IQ scores of adults. So let's suppose IQ is distributed normally with a mean of uh, 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So just as a remember here, 100 is the mean, it goes first. 15 is the standard deviation and it goes second. So for this example, they might give us a graph and again, a normal distribution is this nice bell-shaped curve. It never crosses the horizontal axis. Now, what ends up happening here is this is 100. My mean is 100. And for this particular example, we're going to go ahead and sketch a point at 95. So this is given. This value of 95 is given. And I'm asked to find this area. Okay, now, for this particular example, this would be the probability that um, the next randomly chosen adult's ice cube IQ score is less than 95 or 95 or less. That's how you could interpret this graph. Well, what we like to do then is we like to standardize everything. Well, let's go ahead and standardize 100. So remember, our formula is x minus mu over sigma. So if I standardize 100, I subtract mu, which is 100, over sigma, and sigma in this case is 15. I just get zero there, and as it turns out, the mean will always standardize to zero. Next thing we do, we'll go ahead and standardize 95. So I have 95 minus 100, because my mean is 100, all over 15. So 95 minus 100 is a negative 5. Negative 5 over 15 is negative 0.33, repeating, of course. Our normal tables only go out to the hundredths place, so I'm just going to truncate it right here at the 3. So this is negative 0.33. This means I am one-third standard deviations below the mean, or negative 0.33 standard deviations 
from the mean. And the negative takes into account that I'm below the mean. Okay, so kind of going back to this picture then, this scale is my IQ scale. This scale is my standardized scale, my Z scale. Now in order to figure out what's going on here, to find this area, what I do is I take negative 0.33 and I look it up on my table. So let's go ahead and pull a table in. Now the negative will be on the left hand table and here's negative 0.3, negative 0.30, negative 0.31, negative 0.32, and negative 0.33. So my answer here would be 0 0.3707, this value right here. Okay, so when I look that up on the table, what that looks like then is phi negative 0.33 is 0 0.3707. I'm just going to double check that, make sure. Yep, negative 0.3 is 0 0.3707. So the area here is 0 0.3707. Now if I had to write this in a probability statement, I would say this is the probability that a person's IQ is less than 95. Now when we standardized it, this is the same as the probability that Z is less than negative 0.33. So the probability that the next IQ is less than one-third of a standard deviation below the mean. And we got 0 0.3707 for our solution there. So these problems really aren't too bad if you can just organize your work because you do the same thing over and over again in terms of the process of solving the problem. What we need to look at pretty carefully here is not just the, you know, the process and the steps, but also using our tables and then our calculators. So let's go ahead and stick with this problem and then check our answer with the calculator. So when you use your calculator, you actually don't have to go through the standardization process because it kind of takes care of it for you. So our steps would be second, DISTR, normal CDF. Now, if you don't have um, all of these options where it asks you specifically lower, upper, mean, and standard deviation, all you need to do is put them in the same order, lower, upper, mean, standard deviation, and just put commas in between. Now if we look at our graph, this lower end over here, we can see is heading off toward negative infinity. So we want a really, really small negative number there, or really, really large negative number, I guess is another way to think about it. And I usually put in a negative 100,000, and that seems to be enough. Now our upper then will be 95 because this shaded area goes from negative infinity up to 95. Now this is where things change a bit. Our mean is 100. It's no longer just 0. And our standard deviation was 15. And again, that's information that was given in the original problem. So that was given right here where our mean is um, 100 and our standard deviation is 15. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our output. There's our command, normal CDF. Whoops, let's see what we have wrong here. Okay, what I had wrong is, is when I put in the negative 100,000, I use the minus, or I use the subtraction sign instead of the negative, so I have to make sure I use that negative. Okay, once I evaluate that, I can see my solution here is 0.36944. Let's go ahead and compare that to what we have over here. And we can see that it's not exact, but it's pretty close, 0.36944 and 0.3707. This has to do with the accuracy in the tables. The tables only go out to the nearest hundredth, whereas the calculator takes it out all the way. So either one of these solutions would be fine to use in my math lab. Just make sure you round um, as it asks. Now just to write this out for normal CDF, remember the order is lower, upper, mean, and standard deviation. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another example. And again, with these problems you have to standardize the scores if you're going to use your normal tables. If you use your calculators, you don't have to standardize your scores. But it's a good idea to know how to standardize because we'll have to standardize um, in our next section. 
Okay, for our next example, let's go ahead and look at IQ again. Seems like a lot of the problems have to do IQ. IQ in this case is normally distributed with a mean equal to 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Okay, so same as last problem, this is my mean and this is my standard deviation. So for this example, they're going to give us a table And on this table, they're going to give us some values. Remember the normal curve never crosses. So here I have 100. And let's say I'm looking for the probability that the next IQ is between 105 and 70. So I'm looking for this area right here. So this is my Z scale. And what I want to do, I'm sorry, this is my IQ scale. And then what I want to do is transfer all of this to the Z scale. So remember, the mean always goes to 0 because I take 100 minus 100 and get 0 there. And then let's go ahead and look at the other two values. Now this is a between type of statement. So let's go ahead and standardize 105. So again, z equals x minus mu over sigma. So z equals 105 minus 100 over 15. 105 minus 100 is 5 over 15, which is equal to 0.33. Now, my tables don't go any further than 100, so it doesn't do any good to take it out any further. Now, my other score, this is 0.33 here on my z-scale. My other score would be 70 minus 100 over 15. Now, 70 minus 100 is a negative 30 over 15, which simplifies to negative 2. So this basically says I'm two standard deviations below the mean, all the way up to a third of a standard deviation above the mean. So now what I can do is look up these scores. So if I look up this score, phi of 0.33, let's see what we get. So that's going to be over here on the right hand side. So here's phi of 0.3, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33. That's 0 0.6293. And then for my next one, I have phi of negative 2. So let's go ahead and look up negative 2 on the left-hand table. And here I have negative 2.00. That's 0 0.0228. Now what's happening here is the phi of 0.33, that's giving me the area from here to negative infinity. So that's 0.6293, but I don't want all that area. I want that area to not be counted anymore from here to negative infinity, because I want to cut that off and only count the area between. So this area is 0 0.0228. So to find the area that's left, will give me this shaded area right here. So what I do is I subtract. So I'd have 0 0.6293 uh, minus 0 0.0228. And I have 0 0.6065. So this area right here then is 0 0.6065. Now the way that we could write this out in terms of a probability statement, which I think is really helpful, is I'm basically saying what's the probability that IQ is between 70 and 105? Now it doesn't matter if these are less than or, less than or equal to. So this ended up being the same as a probability that negative 2 is less than or equal to my standard normal random variable which is less than or equal to 0.33. So the way we look this up then is phi of 0.33 minus phi of negative 2, 0.6293 minus 0 0.0228. And again, what I have for my solution then was 0.6065. So this is another way to look at that same problem. Now the notation down here kind of helps me keep track of things. Now if you subtracted these in the wrong order, 
you would get a negative probability. And remember, probabilities can't be negative. Probabilities always have to be positive. So let's go ahead and pull in our calculator and see what kind of answer that we get. Remember, the calculator you don't have to standardize um, because it kind of takes care of that already when you put in the mean and standard deviation. So we'd go second, DISTR, normal CDF. Now my lower bound in this case is going to be 70. My upper bound will be 105. And my mean is 100 and my standard deviation is 15, so that's good. So here's that 70 to 105. So that's why it's my lower and my upper. The 100 is in here just to show where the average of the mean is. Okay, so there's my command and I get 0 .6078. Let's go ahead and throw that into our notes and compare it. And we can see for here, this gets really close to what the normal tables have. Now in terms of which is more accurate, the normal tables or your calculator, calculator is actually more accurate because my normal tables can only go out to hundredths and your calculator takes it out much further than that. Now the thing to do is to be very careful about how you round because in my math lab it will say you know round to four places or round to three places. And you should be able to round either one of those uh, as long as um, you're rounding it correctly, my math lab should accept it. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another example um, where we're kind of using some language of like less than, greater than, or at most. So for this one, let's go ahead and suppose we have IQs again are distributed normally with mean of 105 and a standard deviation of 20. So again, this is mean and standard deviation. And we want to know, uh, find the probability that a randomly selected adult has an IQ. So we want to find the probability that they have an IQ of less than 137. So this is a nice little probability statement where we can just put in the less than sign 137. So looking at this in terms of a picture, our mean is at 105, 137 is somewhere way up here to the right, and I want less than, so it's all of this area. This is a large area. So this is my IQ scale. This will be my standardized scale. Now remember, the mean will always standardize to zero. Let's see what happens with 137. So I take 137 minus my mean of 105, divided by 20, my standard deviation. So when I subtract here, 137 minus 105, and I take that answer and divide it by 20, I have to take my answer and I have to round it to the nearest uh, hundredth because my tables only go out to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so let me grab my calculator here. And I have uh, 137 minus 105. That's going to give me 32 over 20. So I get 1.6. So this means I'm 1.6 standard deviations above the mean for my z-scale. So in order to find this area, that's going to be phi of 1.6. So for the phi of 1.6, I go ahead and look up that value on my table. So I'd look up my right hand table of 1.6 and here's 1.60 so this is 0.9452 would be the area to the right. So this is 0 0.9542 so that's this area. So if it's inside the table it's inside the curve and so that's my probability that I'm looking for for my answer. Okay, so now for a calculator approach, we do second DISTR, normal CDF. Now the lower here is going to go clear toward negative infinity. So you need to choose a negative, very large number. I use 100,000, that usually seems to work fine. Um, and then my upper bound right here goes clear up to 137. I don't have to put in my standardized value, I can just use the mean and the standard deviation that was given. 105 is the mean that was given, 
and my standard deviation in this case was uh, 20. Okay, let's see what our solution is. So for our solution, we get 0.9452. So it looks like it's identical except our second and third values are swapped. 9452, 9542. So again, my math lab will accept either one and on an exam what you do is just choose the closest value um, to the multiple choice that we're given or if this was a show your work problem, either one of these answers would be accepted. Okay, so we've looked at a, a couple different problems. We've looked at a between, uh, we've looked at a less than, and we're also going to have to be working at some problems where we're actually working these backward as well. So let's go ahead and look at some percentile problems because it seemed like those kind of were some trickier ones. And then we'll also maybe finish up with a couple of other options. Okay, now for a percentile problem, a picture will really help. So let's again suppose um, we have IQ scores, again, that are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Okay, so now what we want to do here, the directions are, we want us to find P sub 4. Now this is the IQ score separating the bottom 4% from the top 96%. So this is the IQ score. Separating the bottom 4% and the top 96%. Okay, so let's draw a picture. That usually helps out quite a bit. So here we have a normal distribution. Our mean is 100. Now what we want to do is we want to separate this curve out and find P4. Now this says the bottom 4%. So they're telling us already what this number is. Usually we use our tables to find this, but this time they gave us this value. So the answer to this question will be whatever is in this box. That's going to be the IQ score that separates the bottom 4% and the upper 96%. Now the upper 96% doesn't really concern us as much because our tables and our calculator do left area. They always give us the area to the left. Okay, so now let's go ahead and think about working these backwards. This value of 100, when I standardize it, becomes zero. So this is my IQ scale and this is my Z scale. So I'm kind of, again, I'm kind of working these backward. Now what we can do then is we can kind of think about what this value is for my z-score. So 0.04. This is basically saying what value would I look up on my table and get 0 0.04 back out. So let's go ahead and grab our tables. Now we're definitely to the left because I have very, very small area. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to search through these tables to get the closest I can to 0 0.04. Here's 392. Oh, here's one. 0 0.0401. So if I look up 0 0.0401, that's negative 1.75. Okay. So what that's telling me, I look up 0 0.04 on the inside. That says that I am negative 1.75 standard deviations from the mean. So this value is negative 1.75. Okay. Now what I need to do is figure out, okay, if one standard deviation is 15, how many standard deviations is 1.75? And the way we can solve this pretty easily is by using z equal x minus mu over sigma. And now if you think about it, we know z. It's negative 1.75. What we don't know is this value for the IQ, this value of X. We do know mu, and we do know sigma. Now we just use good old algebra to help us solve for X. We multiply both sides through by 15. 
use cancel. And so on the left hand side I'll have 15 times negative 1.75 So I get 26.25, negative 26.25 equals x minus 100. And then I'd add 100 across to both sides. These cancel. So I'm going to have uh, negative 26.25 minus 100. So I end up with 73.75 equals x, which is my IQ score that I'm looking for. That is the fourth percentile. So this is 73.75. So 70, if you have an IQ score of 73.75, that means only 4% of all adults have an IQ score less than you. 96% of all adults have an um, IQ score higher than you. So this is that value of P sub 4. So this is P sub 4. You have to work the problem backward. OK, now let's think about how we're going to work this with your calculator. With your calculator, we use a different command. Instead of second DISTR and then choosing normal CDF, we do second DISTR and choose inverted normal or inverse normal. And we use this when we already know the area in the shaded region. So the area that we were given is 0.04, and it's always the area to the left. My mean was 100, and my standard deviation was 15. Okay, so here's my command that you would type in if you don't have that table. You type in shaded, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation. Okay, and it's giving me a value there. And let's go ahead and paste that in and compare it to what we have. So you can see that these are pretty close. This would round to hundreds to 73.74. This is 73.75. So again, they're very, very close. Um, just be careful how you round it. Um, my math lab will be particular about how it rounds. It might say to the nearest tenth or the nearest hundredth. You just have to make sure you follow those instructions. OK, let's go ahead and run through a couple more examples just to make sure that when you hit your homework problems, you have a lot of examples to pull from. This example, finally, is not using IQ scores. This one is using um, birth weight of babies. Uh, so let's suppose birth weights are normally distributed with a mean of 3,422 grams and a standard deviation of 495 grams. So remember, this is mu and sigma. If a hospital plans to set up special observation conditions for the lightest 3% of babies, so we're looking for the cutoff for the lightest 3% of babies, basically then what we're asked to do is we're asked to find out what weight is used for the cutoff, separating the lightest 3% from the others. So if we had to write this in a probability statement, we'd say, what is a probability that a birth weight less than some value c, we'll say, or x, we don't know what it is, is equal to 0 0.03. So the picture in that nice little normal curve, our mean is 34.22. And we, what we know down here is this area is 0 0.03. We already know it's 0.03, so right away I know I'm working this problem backward. And so this is the weight that I'm looking for right here. What is that weight that creates this? Well, we already know, again, these are my birth weights. BW is birth weights. The mean standardizes to zero, and what I need to do is work backward now. So if I look up phi of this value of C, let's say, I know I get 0.03. So let's go ahead and grab our tables. Oops, grab our tables. And we're going to look up 0.03, closest we can get. And you have to be careful to make sure you're actually getting the closest. Oh, here it is, 0.0301. Right here, 0 0.0301, which is negative 1.88. It's 
zero three zero one negative one point eight eight. Okay, so I know that this value is negative 1.88. That means I'm 1.88 standard deviations below the mean. Okay, so then we can come back over here and we can say, okay, well, z equals x minus mu over sigma. I just figured out that z was negative 1.88 equals x, and x is this birth weight that I'm trying to figure out. Mean was 3,422, and sigma was 495. So again, using algebra, we're going to multiply both sides through by 495 to clear the fraction. So they cancel here. Now, on the left-hand side, I would take 495, times 1.88 and I get 930.6 negative 930.6 equals x minus 34.22 so I'm going to add 34.22 to both sides these cancel and I get 34.22 minus 930.6 I get 2491.4, 491.4, so that's this number right here, 2491.4. So what that means is if a baby weighs um, 2491.4 grams or less, they will be under special observation because the hospital rule was if a baby is in the lowest 3% of birth weights, they'll be under special observation. Let's go ahead and grab our calculator and we'll actually see how we can do this on the calculator. Now remember, they gave me the shaded area first, so I'm going to do second DISTR and then this inverse normal. The shaded area on this one was 0.03. The mean was 34.22. And the standard deviation was 495. And what this is going to do is it's going to work backward and find the mean, or sorry, the P03, the, the third percentile basically. And here that is, it's 2491. 0 0.007. So that's pretty close. The normal distribution and the normal tables got pretty close to that value. So again, just be really careful that you round according to what my math lab says. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another example. So for this one, let's go ahead and suppose the length of pregnancies Um, is normally distributed with a mean of 266 days and a standard deviation of 15 days. So again, this is my mean and this is my standard deviation. So I guess to abbreviate this, I'll say lengths, pregnancy lengths, we use L for lengths, is normally distributed 266.15. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this up into two parts. Our first part, A, says find the probability of a pregnancy lasting 309 days or longer. So what's the probability that a pregnancy lasts more than 309 days or longer? So there could be a greater than or a greater than or equal to here, but it actually doesn't matter whether there's an equal sign because for a continuous distribution, there's no area above a single point on a curve. So let's go ahead and look at a picture here first. That always helps me to see a picture of what's going on. So our mean here is at 266. So here I'd be up at 309, and it says longer than. Okay, so longer than would be to the right, so I'm looking for this area. So this is my length distribution. And what I need to do is I need to standardize these to my z distribution. 
Remember, the mean always standardizes to zero. And what we need to do is figure out 309. How many standard deviations is that above the mean? Well, you could kind of logic your way through it and look at the distance between these two and divide it by 15, or we can just kind of go back to that same formula. Z equal 309 minus my mean. My mean is 266 all over sigma. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what that value is. We would take the 309 minus 266 first. So we'd have 43 over 15, and I'd have 2.87. So that means I'm 2.87 standard deviations above the mean. That's a, that's a big z-score, 2.87. That's unusual, because remember, usual meant I was within two standard deviations, okay, two above or two below. This is I'm 2.87 standard deviations, so that's unusual. That's considered unusual. Now, in order for me to find this area, I have to use the idea of the complement. So this area, this would be the same as the probability that z is um, greater than or equal to 2.87. This is going to be 1 minus, because I know the total area underneath the curve is 1. And when I use my normal tables, they give me the area to the left. So I would take 1 minus phi of 2.87. Okay, now remember what this means. It just means to go to the table and look up 2.87 on the outside. So let's go ahead and look up 2.87 on the outside. 2.801234567. So there's 2.879979. 9979. Okay, that is a very big number. So if I take 1 minus the point 9979, I get point zero zero two one. That is a very small area, point zero zero two one. So if you had a pregnancy that was lasting 309 days or longer or greater, only less than 0.2% of the population has a pregnancy that lasts that long, so that would be a very unusual case. Okay, let's go ahead and now look at your calculators to see how you would do that with your calculator. So this one, we're not given the shaded area. Let's kind of scoot over here. We don't know this to start with, so we're going to do second DISTR normal CDF. Now, I, the lower is 309 in this case. Okay, so 309 would go here. Now my upper is this really, really large number. So I'm just gonna put in 100,000 for an example. My mean is 266, it was given to me, and my standard deviation was 15. Okay, so putting all of this in, Let's go ahead and snap that into our lecture and see how it compares. So what this is telling me is that probability is 0 0.00207. So it's very, very close to what we have as well. Comparison-wise, this would be 0 0.002, and then the 7 would round the 0 to a 1, so 0 0.0021. So that is part A. Now part B for this same setup, the same information, is it might say if the length of a pregnancy is in the lowest 4%, then the baby is premature. So they define a baby to be premature um, if the length of the pregnancy is in the lowest 4%. So premature if the length of the pregnancy is in the lowest 4%. You know, we already did a 4% in the lower, so let's do a 5% just to use a different number. I'm gonna mix these up a little bit. Okay, so basically they're telling us that shaded area again. So here's our distribution. The mean was 266 days. And again, this is my length 
This is pregnancy length. And then I know there's some cutoff down here. And I know this area is 5%, 0 0.05. So what I want to do is I want to find the number of days that that cutoff would be, because anything below this number of days is considered premature. Well, I already know that on my Z scale, the mean standardizes to zero. That will always happen. Now, what I need to do here is to look up in my table this value down here of Z. So one way that we could think about that is we could think about this as phi of Z equals 0.05. So I already know the 0.05 part. So I go to my tables and I look up the 0.05 inside the table. Not on the outside, but on the inside. So if you notice, it's right in between 0.0505 and 0.0495. And so since it's exactly in between, they say to take the average, and if we follow this arrow down, they tell us to use negative 1.645. So I'm 1.645 standard deviations below the mean. So this would be true if z equals negative 1.645. Okay, so now I'm working the problem backward. I'm trying to find this pregnancy length here. So I use z equal x minus mu over sigma. I know z is negative 1.645. x is this value I don't know that I'm trying to figure out. Mu is 266, and sigma in this particular case was 15 days. So again, I use algebra, multiply both sides through by 15, these cancel. Multiply this side by 15 as well. So on the left-hand side, when I multiply this out, I get a negative 24.675 equals x minus 266. Add 266 to both sides. It's always whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. I have canceling occurring here. And then when I subtract 266 on the left, I get negative 241, I'm sorry, positive 241.325 for x. Now, if we round this to the nearest integer, then really what I'm looking for here is 241 days. Okay, now let's go ahead and see what our calculator would give us. We would do the same second DISTR. You're going to look at inverse normal. We have 5% in the left tail. My mean is 266. My standard deviation is 15. Let's see what we get here for our answer. And we get uh, 241.327. So this one was really close to our actual answer that we got with the normal tables. So 241.325 compared to 241.327 is pretty accurate. Either way, this goes to 241 days. Now if this was 241.78, you would round that to 242. So be careful how you round there. So to conclude, uh, therefore, the three dots in the shape of the triangle mean therefore a pregnancy length of less than 241 days is considered premature. Okay, so that's what we're trying to conclude here. As usual, if you have questions, please let me know. You're welcome to bring your questions to class. Uh, you can stop by my office or email me uh, questions as well. Good luck with this section, and again, make sure you remember how to standardize and use your calculators to check your answers. Good luck.